<clears throat> Good morning, everybody. Prepare your scatters. How's everybody doing on this Tuesday morning or evening or afternoon, depending on where you're watching? Welcome to the stream. We've got a lot of exciting stuff to do today. Um, and some not so exciting stuff. We've got, we've got new Drytrons. I haven't read them yet, but I'm kind of, uh, I'm, I, I am, I, I'm afraid. I do not want good Drytrons. <laughs> I do not want good Drytrons, please. Oh uh, god, we'll we'll read them in a bit. We'll read them in a bit. <laughs> uh Malady Rai Rai, thank you for the eight months. Ban every level one fire monster. I don't know about that. We'll talk about that too. Uh that is also something I have planned for today. We're gonna do um we're gonna do our ban list talk today. I decided why not right now. I don't know. I I don't know if it's time already. I don't know when the ban list is gonna happen, but I think uh I think we're gonna do that today. Talk about what could happen in the current format. We'll we'll get that out of our out of the system. Um Ictusio, thank you for the 15. Appreciate that. Thank you. Um yeah, so that's one thing we have coming up today. TCG ban list talk. It's only been two months. It's been Two and a half. And the thing is, I'd ra there's not that much coming up soon. That's like, there's nothing that changes, right? What's, what's the next thing that's coming out for us? Legacy of Destruction in like April. So it's going to be like this for a while, right? Unless I'm missing a set in my mind right now. That's like impactful. Do we have a side set coming up this month? I don't, I don't even know. I think it's just Legacy of Destruction at some point. But I don't know what else there would be. Uh, let me check. Yeah. Uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! release schedule. Uh, upcoming releases. Yeah, there's nothing coming up until Legacy of Destruction. There's nothing releasing until Legacy of Destruction. So I feel like we might as well do the banlist dis uh, discussion now. Um, because, I mean, rather sooner than later, because the format has pretty much developed. We know what the format is. We can do the talk. Um, and uh, I'd rather do it too, too soon than too late, because then, uh, you know... A missed opportunity for for making the discussion happen uh so yeah we'll we'll do it today uh we also have some more things to do in in master duel i ideally i don't know if we're going to be able to do it today but i ideally would want to hit master one because the the duelist cup starts soon and then i would rather play the duelist cup than ranked but if we uh, if we don't make it today, that's also fine. We still got plenty of time left in the month. We'll just do it after the Duelist Cup then. Uh, and then we have Ryan Yu on the podcast today. Isn't that isn't that exciting? We've got the podcast episode with uh, with Farfa and Ryan today, so that's going to be fun as well. Uh, the main focus for that is also going to be on uh, like Ryan as a person and. Uh, and the Duelist Cup system in general, because Ryan Yu, in case you didn't know, Ryan Yu did qualify for Worlds in the latest Duelist Cup. So uh, we'll ask him for, for some tips as well, and in case anyone wants to grind this upcoming Duelist Cup. So that's going to be cool. All right, um, we shall begin with some uh, card guesser. Let's see if we, let's see how washed we are today. Let's go. Let's go. Did Ryan win Worlds? Ryan won um, Dragon Duel Worlds in 2017 or 18. I don't know exactly which one it was, but he did. He's a he's a Dragon Duel World Champion. Yeah. Uh, all right, let us begin. This feels familiar. I've seen this. Uh, Godogo, thank you for the four months, appreciate you. Who is this? Legendary, ah uh, yeah, Legendary Maju Gazette. I cannot spell. That is the one. Ah! Uh, 
Wait. Who are you? Galaxy Tyranno. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Mm. Can't tell what's going on here. Libromancer? Libromancer bonded? Yeah. Mm. Don't know this one. Oh no, it's ah, it's the, the magician, the pendulum. Okay, noble dragon. Yeah, yeah. Uh two toads with one sting. Yeah. Uh is that meta noise? Yeah. Center frog. Mm -mm -mm. Ah. Yeah. It's the 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 is is it jackal? It's the trap. Oh, I don't know the name of the trap. Okay. Beast magic attack. Okay, good, good, good. Good thing I skipped. This feels familiar. This is an Exo sister, isn't it? Is that Michaelis? Yeah. Uh, infinity. Supreme King Gate. Wait, no? Oh, is it gate zero? Oh, it's gate zero. I thought it was infinity. Okay. Uh, this feels familiar. I think that's the Vylon, though, and I'm pretty bad with Vylons because there's a lot of different ones. Tetra. Vylon Tetra. Nope. That's what I mean. Stella. Yeah. Uh, is that Barry Ant's force? Nope. I tried. Rank up ma Rank up what? I'm, I'm I didn't I don't even know why I tried. I didn't even know. I honestly no. I, I, that's my bad. I shouldn't have tried. It's it's dumb. It's dumb. Admiration of the thousands. Yeah, okay. I shouldn't have bothered. I've never seen this card in my life. Unbreakable spirit. Ah, uh, you are old. Oh God, this um, Ganadora. Yes. Wait, no. Granadora. That's the one. Um, I also know this one. Is this the drag? No. I actually don't know this one. I don't know what it's called. Dark Prisoner. Okay. Uh, the Great Sphinx is, is what that is. Tainan. Yeah. Labyrinth? Oh yeah, that's uh, lovely. Uh, that's one of the raccoons. Uh, Ponpoko? Uh, wind up, wind up, uh, dog, dog. Mm. 
Lone Fire. Nobleman of Cross out. Easy Clappers. Uh, uh. No, I don't know. I don't know what that's called. I've seen it. Uh, I called the zone, yeah. Is that a weather painter? I'm pretty sure that's a weather painter. Cloudy canvas. This feels... Oh, that's Jin. Uh, Jin... Uh, not Releaser, not this one. Demolisher? Yeah. Uh, I don't know this one. Danger, Excitement, Mystery. Okay. Noted. That's the Performer Pal star. Uh, I can't tell which one it is, though. I don't know which one that is. Oh, the Trump Panda. Yeah. <laughs> that is a Phantom Knight. Is that Bardish? It is Bardish. Okay, nice. Uh, Mellow Melody. Yep. Uh, that's a Vylon again, I think. Maybe not? No, I don't think so, actually. Hieratic? It could be Hieratic. Oh, is that Heliopolis? Uh, Sun Dragon. Yeah. That's a Blackwing. Oh, Blackwing. Uh, oh. With it, uh, Aurora. Jetstream. Jetstream. Yeah. I know this one. Yeah. Oh, what is it called? No, it's not Donza Luke. It's a, it's a trap card. Ah, uh, combination, dark scorpion, combination, yeah. Uh, that libromancer intervention. Yep. I I I already knew it before I clicked zoom. I already knew it. I I I knew it. I didn't need to check twice. I, I I just clicked zoom because I always click zoom by habit, but I, I already knew. Uh, that's a fair hire. Uh, Recon, maybe? No. Helmer? Helmer. Helmer. This also feels familiar. But I don't know the name of it. It's a very old vanilla. It's like that Jin dude. Jin of the Lamp? Lord of the Lamp, maybe? Yeah. Ah, uh, that's a Batteryman. D, I think? Uh, Chronomaly Moi. Yep. Uh, Dread Scythe Harvester. Yes. That's a generator. Uh, the, 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 is it Lopter? It's Lopter. Okay. Uh, Allure Queen, I think. 
Allure Queen five or seven? Five? Nope. Seven? No. Ah, uh, this looks familiar. Ah, uh, it's a Valence. Oh, no. Buster Baron. No. Dominator Duke. No. Archer. Nah. Dude, come on. I'm skipping. Can't be asked. Mad Marcus. Yeah, whatever, dude. Um, Kwaki Meru. No, I, I always mix up. I always mix up uh, Kwaki Meru and Laval. They have like very similar artwork sometimes. Stenen. Okay. Um, you guys are gonna know this one, but I actually don't. It's like some burst stream of Mega Omega Lol destruction. I don't know. Oh, no, it's a uh, Mystical Elf retrain. Mystical Elf White Lightning. Yeah. I do not know this one. Spartan. What's going on here? Um. I don't know this one. Liberty at last. You're right. Okay, it'd be good if we could guess some cards now. Kind of, kind of unfortunate what's going on. This looks like an Infernity card. Contract of the Void. That does not exist. There's only Eye of the Void. That's not it. Contract with the Void. Okay, unfortunate. Uh, that's Graceful Revival. Uh, is that Shireg? I'm not sure. No. Oh, it's Bucephalus. Oh, I was close. I was in the right. Yeah. Okay. It looked somewhat like. The, yeah. It looked. It looked familiar. Um, Spirit Reaper. Grave Keepers. Purse. No. Vassal. Vassal. Uh, no idea. Ultimate shield. This is that nettle thing, right? Silent sea nettle. Yep. You guys know I'm a fish expert now. We get these. This feels familiar. Who are you? Ah! Side effects. Uh, chaos end. Fright for... Wolf? No, we would have gotten 900 if that was correct. Ah! Fright for a Reborn? Okay, well... You do not have the right to spam wash today. We even had a... We had a poll today saying, like, if I do more than 800, it's not washed. You do not have the right. You do not have the right to do that. It was not bad. It was genuinely not bad. The, the last couple minutes were kind of washed. We could have got... If the, yeah, the last... We could have gotten 900 on this one. Well, it was not bad. 
Zooming in on fountain costs us the 900. No, you lose. If you zoom from the first to the second one, you lose 20 points. So we would have been on 899. Uh, Titan, thank you so much for the Prime. Appreciate the first time. Prime, thank you for the support. FaZe, thank you for the 10 months. And Vorth, thank you for the 17. Appreciate you guys so much. Thank you. Hi, one in chat, if you think Josh should enable the race sub sound any day he gets under 900 points. That is just, that is, no, no, do not, do not type one. <laughs> All right, we are on the lookout for a level four effect monster. Not a dark, not a warrior, not an exceed, lower than 1500 attack, higher than 1500 defense newer than 2015 um what about what's like a what's like a level four with low attack but high defense from like recent years it was like speed right menko maybe no that's 2015 um after 2015 uh it can't be alistair because it's a, not a dark Rhino Heart doesn't work because it's, 50, it's less than 1,500 attack. It could be... What about Mapura? No. Uh, there's, a, there's tennies with those stats, though. It could be a tenny. Shtana. It's not Shtana. And it is not just an effect monster. Meaning... What? Pendulum? Synchro? flip and it's 2020 2021 2022 um what is a level four synchro from recent years what year is cupid pitch yeah cupid pitch has 600 defense though is there another level what's a level four synchro um Star mine? No, that doesn't have the stats. Quandax? Quandax has too much attack. The Speedroid one? Speedroid. Which one? Uh. Bull Pass, thank you for the two months. Appreciate that. Thank you so much. I'm not seeing one that fits. Puzzle? Puzzle stats don't match. No, the puzzle stats don't, ma don't work out at all. What about fusion? It could be a level 4 fusion. What year is Entis from? But Entis is 2500 attack. Can't be Entis. Earphone? Earphone stats don't work out. Hmm. Is there a crawler? Like flip? Level 4 flip? No, they're all level 2 or higher level. Magic key. Maybe it's a ritual? No. White relic? It's a ritual? A level 4 light ritual from 2022. Oh, is it the Libromancer? I think it is. Yeah, it's the Libromancer. That was, that's, that was guessable. That was guessable. Yeah, okay. It was just, my problem was I focused too much on synchros. I didn't, I didn't think, uh, I didn't think of rituals that much. Okay, well, here we are. 
speaking of rituals, what a bangers, what a banger segue this is. Um, we need to talk about Drytron support, apparently. Um, all right. Wish upon a shooting star with new Drytron, Infinite Forbidden. So, as I said yesterday, we are in the middle of Infinite Forbidden reveal season. So, I hope, I mean, I'm, I'm excited for it. We're going to get, like, reveals of new cards uh, regularly now. Um, however, today we need to talk about something that I, I didn't really, I don't know how I feel about this, you know? Uh, Drytron is, is not my favorite type of deck. Uh, cause, uh, you know, the combo deck tries to do a lot of unfair things. So I'm a little scared. I haven't read these yet. I have not read these yet, but there is apparently Drytron support coming in the Infinite Forbidden, which, I don't know, I can think of like a thousand archetypes that I would rather have support for than Drytron again. But, um, here we are. So let's, let's, let's see. So we've got a new level one monster, a new main deck monster, Drytron, new two. Uh, level one light machine, of course, and uh, cannot be normal summoner set like they all have. And the same stats as all of them, I believe. Must be special summoned by a card effect. You can only use the first and second effect of this card's name each once per turn. You cannot ritual summon monsters to turn you activate either of this card's effect, except machine monsters. Uh, okay, this restriction, I don't know how much this matters, but it matters a little bit, right? Because you can't, like, ritual summon Benton anymore. That is something they would do sometimes. Right? You can't, you can't summon Benton back to tribute it again. You can't summon, you can't go into Herald of the, of the, per, uh, Herald of Perfection or Herald of Ultimateness. You can't do that either. Okay, so it is. I, I, I'm pretty sure you can, you could still play it if it is really good, but it does matter. It, it does matter. I think if there is a Drytron card on the field, you can special summon this card from your hand or graveyard, but banish it when it leaves the field. If this card is special summoned, you can add a Drytron monster from your deck to your hand, except Drytron New Two. Okay, so this one is actually different than the other Drytrons. Cause correct me if I'm wrong, but so far. How many Drytron main deck monsters are there? There's exactly four before this one, right? And they all work the same way. They all have this, like, tribute one to special summon. There's five? Okay. Which one? Alpha, Zeta. Uh... Oh, but one sucks. Okay, okay. I, 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 okay, 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 okay. I, I, four, four that were being played. Okay. Um... So this one works differently than the other ones, right? Because this one is not the uh, not tribute one to special it, right? Um, so it's more of a like an extender. Don't they have an emergency teleport to just special summon this from the deck? Isn't doesn't that isn't that they have Alpha uh, Nova Drytron Nova or whatever it's called? Does this does that thing negate the effect? Or can you just special this and add one? That's pretty good. That's pretty broken. The, the fact that you can use the spell card to special this now and then search alpha. That's pretty good. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, this card is pretty strong. However, I do like that they put a restriction on it. Which makes it... Good, but not completely broken overall, I think. But it is a really good card. It is a really good card. I don't know how much it matters that we can't ritual summon except machines. Uh, but I, I, it means no Herald of Ultimateness, no Herald of Perfection, no summoning Benton to use it over and over and over again. So I'm a fan of that, at least. I'm a fan of that, at least. Okay, so we have Drytron Medionis equals Dad. Oh, okay. That's that, that's a that's a weird name. <laughs> why does it? Why is it? Why is it called Medionis equals Dad? <laughs> does someone in the Konami R and D department have a have daddy issues or something like that? We just go like Medionis equals Dad. Okay. Well, I'm pr I'm sure it's some wordplay probably. Uh, yeah. It's a it's short for something. December Alpha Draconids. Whatever. I don't know what that means. It it just it looks funny. Okay. 
Uh, level 12 light machine ritual effect monster. 5,000 attack, 5,000 defense. You can ritual summon this with Medionis Drytron. Uh, other Drytron monsters you control cannot be destroyed by your opponent's card effects. Up to twice per turn. When your opponent activates a monster effect, quick effect, you can banish Drytron monsters from your graveyard whose total attack equal or exceed that monster's original attack. Negate the activation and if you do destroy that monster... If this ritual summon card you control is destroyed by your opponent, you can special summon a ritual monster with 4,000 attack from your hand or deck. This is treated as a ritual summon. Okay. Um, that is a pretty good boss monster. That is a pretty good boss monster um, that you can still summon, even if you lock yourself with this one. However, there's a few things I want to point out. 5,000 attack means you have to... You can't just summon it that easily, right? Because the way Drytron's Ritual Summon with the Ritual spell that they have is you can detach from the Exceed monster instead, right? But the Drytrons all have 2,000 attack, so you can't just detach two. That doesn't work, right? It makes it awkward. You have to, like... It's, like, harder to summon than the ones that they already have. Uh, So... That's worth pointing out. The other thing that's worth pointing out is that this second effect, at first, it reads incredibly strong because it's like a, a twice per turn negate a monster effect and destroy it, which is very, very good, right? However, um, having to banish your Drytrons from the graveyard also kind of like removes all of your follow-up, right? Like, okay, you can banish the Exceed with no downside, right? You're banishing, you can banish the Exceed, that's whatever. Um, but all the other Drytrons you want to keep in your graveyard, right? And so like, that is relevant, I think. So this card reads really strong, but I think the more you think about it, the more balanced it seems. Still not a bad card by any means, especially if you want to play this card up here, you have to find some good machine rituals to end on, right? And this might be one that this might be one that you want to look out for. So that's uh that's 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 good, but it's not I don't think it's too broken. Uh, Medio Aurora Drytron, continuous trap card. You can only use the first and second effect each once per turn. If a Drytron card becomes banished, you can tribute a Drytron monster, target up to two of your banished Drytron cards, add them to your hand. Okay. You can reveal a Medionis Drytron in your hand. Ritual summon a machine ritual from your hand or graveyard by tributing machine monsters from your hand or field whose total attack equal or exceed that monster's. Uh okay. How does how does Drytron search a trap card? None of them does that, right? The field spell? Oh the field spell? That's not great. That's not good. I don't know. I mean, the card isn't bad, but it's a trap card that is very hard to search. The Drytron field spell isn't that great. Uh, maybe you, maybe you would play this as a one of, but I, I, I don't have an issue with this card. I don't think this card is that strong. Earth's Arctic Drytron. Yeah, I don't know what that does. Doesn't the new level one also search it? Uh, this one, I think it said monster. Yeah, it says Drytron monster. Isn't the field spell just Nova? Yeah, I think most of the time you want to use your field spell to add Nova. You could, there's a universe where you play three of the field spell because Nova is super important now with the new guy. But because if you already have Nova... You play like one copy of this to to search in case you draw field spell plus Nova. That could I that that is something I could see. But okay. Uh but the field spell loses to droll. I mean the entire deck loses to droll, doesn't it? Like I I feel like most of the time that's gonna be an issue for you no matter what you do. 
But you're right. Like using the field spell to search Nova that would summon this, to, which is another searcher, isn't great. But yeah. Um. Okay. So these cards are are not bad. I think these cards are not bad. However, these cards are not as bad as I was like afraid of, you know, like, it, you know what I mean? Like, I, I don't think these cards are something to be terribly afraid of, mainly because the best out of the three cards by far is the is the main deck monster. That one is really good. However, it, it, it applies a lock onto the deck that I feel like maybe the deck should have had from the get go. Maybe that's a hot take, but I feel like this is a lock that Drytron should have had from the beginning. Um, maybe it's not that hot of a take. That that seems like a very lukewarm take. Uh, that is, and that's that's cool in my book, right? Like if they if they change uh, if they if they change the deck in a in a in a way where they can't do a lot of the things that they used to do anymore, right? They can't summon Benton over and over again. Can't summon Herald of Perfection, Herald of Ultimateness, that kind of stuff. I think that's. Um, I think that's a good decision. And so overall, I'm I'm fine with the support. It's it's solid support for sure, but it's not um it's not too broken. So I like that about it. Okay, cool. Cool. Alright, uh I need to go to the toilet real quick because I forgot to go before the stream. I'll be right back. I'll be right back. Mm. All right. <clears throat> okay. Uh, that's it for the Drytron support. Uh, honestly, uh, kind of happy with how that turned out because uh, I was afraid when I saw this morning that there was Drytron support, but I think that's I think that's a solid way to do Drytron support without completely ruining the game. Unplayable support? I, I don't think it's unplayable by any means. Uh, I think I think uh, maybe you're just unhappy with it because uh, it, it doesn't actually play into the existing game plan of Drytron, which is win the game on turn zero before your opponent even sees the light of day. Um, but I, I do like that it maybe drives Drytron in a different direction, you know? The new direction is worse. How is the new direction worse? Because you actually have to play Yu-Gi-Oh! More fun, yes, but worse. Well, I mean, I would say that makes it better. <laughs> I think that's. I think you're you're not making a very good argument right now. You're saying like, oh, these cards are more fun. The new wave Lyrotron is more fun, but it's less competitive because it's less toxic. That's like, you're not. That's that's uh, nah, nah. That's not a very based opinion. <laughs> Let me be toxic. Nope, denied. 
<laughs> All right. Okay. Uh, new cards out of the way. New cards out of the way. Let's move on on today's agenda because today is packed. We have a lot of things to do today. We have a lot of things to do today. And the next thing that we're doing is uh, ban list talk. Yay. We're talking about the TCG Forbidden and Limited list that may or may not be happening some point in the next couple of weeks. I don't actually know. I find it very hard to predict what they're going to do and when they're going to do it. But I just realized this morning that we actually don't have many things that are going to shake up the meta in the upcoming weeks because we have no new sets, no side sets, nothing happening until Legacy of Destruction, which I think is some point in April. Let me check. Uh, I believe we have no release in, in March. Legacy of Destruction, Yu-Gi-Oh. The next main set releases for us April 20. Which is one and a half months from now. So for one and a half months, we have nothing that changes the format. So we might as well have our banlist discussion now, just in case it, hap it happens sooner than we expect it to happen, because I don't want to miss the opportunity to talk about it, right? Um, I feel like the format has developed in it's a it's a pretty it's not a solved format per se but it's it's pretty developed you know everyone knows what's going on everyone knows like okay here's pure snake eye with 18 hand traps here's fire king snake eye and here the rest is basically rogue right and so i want to talk about that today talk about some potential changes that they could make and i have prepared a little bit of a of a ban list discussion over here so we're gonna we're gonna have some fun with that uh, and I think the initial thing, as you can tell, the first row is almost exclusively fire cards. We're going to talk about mainly fire cards. <laughs> um, I think the biggest question that we need to answer or that Konami needs to answer, essentially. I mean, it's, it's not our decision, right? So like, uh, but whenever we have this discussion, it ends up being this sort of mish mishmash between a wish list and an actual prediction, right? So, on the one hand is what you want to happen, on the other hand is what you think will happen, and I th and I think in terms of fire, the biggest question is, will they outright, like, will they murder the deck because of how strong it is? Or will they try to make it weaker to try to level it with the other decks in the format, right? And, like, I personally think it's way more likely they won't completely murder it, which I think is a it, it would be a fair decision. I can completely understand when people are like, you know, kill the fire deck because it's tier zero. I hate tier zero, you know, all that. I, I, I do understand that. However, I also think that like the, the deck just came out um, and is really, really expensive. And I don't think it'd be the smartest move of Konami to like kill a deck that just came out and people have spent a lot of money for it doesn't seem like a great business model to me to just go ahead and like ban snake eye ash or something like that uh because then people are going to be very mad if they um if they have invested into the deck which leaves the question how do you hit the fire deck without killing the fire deck but still making impactful changes i think that's very it's a very good question actually i've, I've been thinking about it and I, do, I haven't reached a, uh, I haven't reached like a, a, a real conclusion on it yet. Because I'm going to be honest with you, something like limiting Snake Eye Ash or something like that, it seems like a super weird hit because it's just, it's, uh, we've talked about consistency hits before, right? We've talked about consistency hits before, and I'm not the biggest fan of it because putting something like Snake Eye Ash to one, while it is possible, uh, it doesn't really change what the deck can do. If they open the Snake Eye Ash or the or the Diabell Star or the Bonfire, you know, there's like dozens of ways to get to get to this card still. And if they do get to it, it's the same situation as before, right? So I don't know if I like limiting Snake Eye or, uh, Ash. I wouldn't hate it either because one thing that it does do, um, so. The deck is still going to be consistent enough with one Snake Eye Ash, but one thing it does do, if they open 
if they don't hard open snake eye ash right uh it makes them weaker to certain hand traps right like drone and lockbird hurts a lot more if you have to bonfire for your snake eye ash uh ash blossom and joyous spring hurts a lot more if you have to go for diabell star into original sinful spoils activate original and then you get ash blossomed a lot better um also, if you have to go through the Diabell Star cards to find your Snake Eye Ash, you, you cannot use the original Sinful Spoils to get to Jet Synchron or Ponyx, right? Like, whenever they start with Diabell Star, it's actually a weaker combo than if they start with Snake Eye Ash, because then you can't access Jet or um, Ponyx. So I do think limiting Snake Eye Ash has its merits, and I think they could do it, uh, and it wouldn't be a bad decision, the more I think about it. Uh, there's a lot of different ways they can approach it. So limiting Snake Eye Ash would be one way. Um, another thing that they could do, um, and keep in mind, when we talk about these changes, I don't think I want all of them to happen at the same time. But um, just to sort my thoughts, I'm going to leave the Ash here for a moment. Maybe I'll leave it in a bit. One other thing they could do is they could limit Poplar. Poplar is being played at multiple copies for a good reason. Every single list uses at least two, if not three. Um, limiting Poplar is okay, because if you draw the one Poplar, then you don't have it in the deck for Bonfire, you don't have it in the deck for Snake Eye Ash. Like, limiting the, the Poplar is okay in that sense. It is a really good card, and sometimes you even want another copy on a follow-up turn. So that would be all right. Um, I am not a fan of banning Poplar at this point in time. It is one of the cards that I could see eventually being banned. However, I think in the first iteration, like the first ban list after its release, I think it's a little bit too soon. Um, and in general, it might just be a little bit too soon to hit Poplar. Also, one thing I don't like about limiting Poplar is I really hate turning a card that is honestly fine to draw into like if 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 poplar is at one you kind of create this weird situation where poplar just kind of becomes a brick you can still play with normal summon poplar but it's it's like uh weird i don't know I, I i kind of am more in the camp of do not touch poplar and touch other stuff i think that would make more sense um another thing that i think absolutely makes sense is limiting flamber's dragon uh flamber's dragon is being played at two copies for a very good reason there's a lot of versions of the deck that play one Flamberge, um, uh, play two Flamberge in order to play around Nibiru. Like, almost every combo that tries to play around Nibiru functions in a way that you go, um, use the Snake Eye Field spell to place a Flamberge, and then um, summon it out in case you get Nibiru, but you then still need the second copy in your deck. So I, I think limiting Flamberge is a real possibility um, that they, they could go for. It also makes drawing one um, a lot worse uh, because you don't have the other one in the deck. Snake Eye Oak, I think I wouldn't touch. I, I've, I've seen people talk about banning it, but I don't think they should. The same is true for Diabell Star. Um, I think Wanted is an interesting one. Uh, I've said they should maybe semi limit or limit Wanted in the past. Um, one of the things about the, about the Diabell Star package that i really like is that you can theoretically start your combos with any of the three right it doesn't really matter if you draw diabell star wanted or original they all kind of work they can all get you there but whenever my opponent draws wanted i it's kind of frustrating because that card just for no reason does the exact same thing that diabell star does but it draws a card later which makes it just so much better than drawing Diabell Star immediately, right? Like, I, I, just, I just hate when my opponent has Wanted instead of Diabell Star. It's just like, my opponent does the exact same thing as if they had drawn Diabell Star, but they draw an extra card at the end. Which, I don't know, to me it's frustrating. Um, I think it, it's a good card to, like, semi-limit or limit because of that, because... Hitting Wanted does, is not going to kill Diabell Star as a card. Like, it's still very, very good. Just slightly adjust the amount of times that your opponent gets to draw a free card. Um, and I think it is one of the cards where I actually wouldn't mind a semi-limit. Normally, I don't put cards... 
I do not put cards on semi-limited very often in these discussions. For wanted, I actually wouldn't mind it. Um, I wouldn't mind putting it to one or two because it also hits the grind game for the deck a little bit. You know, if you have one wanted, you can recycle your original once. If you have two wanted, you can recycle it twice, so on and so forth. So I think some having wanted at one or two makes sense. Whether they're going to put it at one or two, I don't know. I, I think both would be fine. Um, I think it depends what else they want to do for the deck. Um, like I think I think if they limit wanted, uh, that be that be a pretty decent change because it puts the number of Diabell stars from six to four. Um, so that's all right. Uh, original I wouldn't touch. I, I think original is fine as it is. Um. And now to some of the non-Snake Eye cards that I want to talk about here. Um, because like I said, I do think these changes right now that I made on this list, one, a one Ash, one Flamberge, one Wanted, I technically am not a big fan of these changes. I just want to say this. This is not my final version, I think. Because one Wanted, one Ash, I feel like we're going in a direction here. It almost seems like a master duel. Um, it almost seems like a master duel ban list because we're doing consistency hits, except for the Flamberge. We're doing consistency hits, and I'm not typically a fan of consistency hits because the um, my problem with consistency hits is that you you don't really change what the deck is capable of. You just change how consistently it does it. it I, I think introducing an aspect of like inconsistency and breaking into the deck is not the right way to go about it. I don't like that. Um, the problem is I'm struggling to find other ways to hit the deck that don't just murder it, right? Like banning Flamberge, banning Snake Eye Ash, banning Poplar. Those would be options that would completely change how the deck would play. But I, I, that just feels a little bit too harsh for me this early on right um so there's only two approaches that i can think of at the moment uh i can there's only two approaches i can think of one is consistency hits which i'm not a um i'm not a huge fan of uh the other one we're going to talk about in a second which is you you could hit some other cards around it that would maybe change the way the game would be played with this deck uh, Bonfire is a card that I personally am leaning towards not hitting. I think it would not be unreasonable if they did hit Bonfire. But I am I, I feel like we're past the point where hitting the Rhoda is the right solution. Uh, like, I think hitting a Rhoda, it feels awkward to me. It feels awkward to me because at this point, just hit the card that's problematic. Don't hit the card that searches the card that's problematic. Uh, of course, Bonfire is specifically broken in Snake Eyes because of Poplar's effect. But I think at that point, I think Poplar is just the card that is too powerful. Um, I, I do not like hitting Bonfire as much. Um, it could go on the ban list. I, I don't think it, it would be unreasonable by any means. But I, 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 pers I personally wouldn't do it. I, I would not do it. Um, Promethean Princess is a card that I think could eventually end up being banned. I don't think the time is now. The reason why I don't want Promethean Princess to be hit at this moment is I think it would be kind of sad if, uh, like, Promethean Princess is a phenomenal support card for so many fire decks. The problem is no one is paying attention to those fire decks because Snake Eye exists. Uh, and I think that's kind of sad. Like, I would prefer... If we got the... And the same is maybe true for Bonfire, you know? I would, I would like for Snake Eye to get weakened and then have the ability to have some other decks shine using cards like Bonfire or Promethean Princess. The thing is just currently, if you, if you have the money to own Promethean Princess and Bonfire, you have no reason to play any of these other fire decks rather than um, just play Snake Eyes, right? And so I kind of want them to, to, to hit... Snake Eye specifically, um, other than Promethean and Bonfire, because I would like to see what other decks can do with these cards. Um, so that's that. And now, to a completely different direction we could take this, um, because I, this morning, I thought about one way they could do it. Um, 
with that isn't consistency hits, but could actually help hit the fire decks. And that is, we're going to talk about some generic cards now. We're going to talk some about some generic cards now. And I want to mention two cards specifically. And those are, I, I believe, if they ban Jet Synchron and they ban Apollosa, I think Snake Eyes pretty much loses the ability to play through Nibiru completely. Almost entirely. Not completely, completely, but almost entirely. With Jet Synchron, Jet Synchron has been on the ban list before because of Halka Fibrax. And I think, I, I honestly think it, it's not unreasonable to think about doing it again because Jet Synchron enables so many things with the original Sinful Spells card. Um, they are reprinting Appaloosa in Rarity Collection 2. That's why I'm putting it in maybe. I'm not putting it in banned. I'm not saying it's likely. I'm just discussing the format right now. Uh, I think it is interesting to point out that if you, if you were to ban these two cards, the, the Snake Eye deck loses every ability to play through Nibiru, pretty much. Which would completely change the way you would approach the deck. Um, and I honestly think, rarity collection aside, rarity collection aside, from a game design standpoint, I think we are in a, in a point of the game where we need to talk about cards like Appaloosa or Baron. Like, unironically, I'm a little bit tired of seeing Appaloosa and Baron in every single end board because those cards are not just incredibly good end board pieces. They also help you play through hand traps. And I think that's super annoying. It is super annoying. Both of these cards have always been super powerful. And I think they have always been kind of bannable. But th right now, they are in the, the biggest state of being bannable. Like... Appaloosa and, and Baron just making it so that every single combo deck out there just plays through Nibiru like it's nothing, I feel like is um it's super obnoxious to me. And like I, I understand, I understand Appaloosa is in rarity collection too, but that is not good reasoning to me of saying like, yeah, Appaloosa shouldn't be banned because they're printing it again. Like, yeah, maybe that means they won't do it. But that doesn't stop me from saying, like, they should. And I think they should, eventually. And right now would be a pretty good time. Right now would be a pretty good time. Where Savage Dragon? I mean, you could do Savage Dragon instead of Jet Synchron. It would be the same thing. Um, that, and I think this would be an interesting approach. Just making it so Snake Eyes can't play through Nibiru anymore. Right? I think that'd be, I think that'd be interesting, right? And I think this would, in general, be a huge step towards slowing the game down in general because like combo decks losing the ability to play through Nibiru is huge that's a huge deal right uh whether it's Baron or Apple or both you know like it just limits like so many things that these decks can do like this is like we don't even need to touch a single Monadium card we don't even need to touch a single Monadium card if we ban Baron and Appaloosa because like Nibiru is going to regulate that deck very well right um, I just wanted to point that out. I, I just wanted to point that out. I don't have an issue with IP Mask Arena or anything like that because those cards are... I, I think it's okay. I think it's okay for extra deck monsters to be solid end board pieces. That I'm completely fine with. What I do hate is when these cards are super powerful end board pieces and protect your plays on the first turn. Um, and I think that's a, that's a ban worthy behavior, uh, as opposed to something like Linker Rebo, which, uh, I, I think is a very, very powerful card. However, I think if I compare Linker Rebo to other link monsters in the format, other extra deck monsters in the format, I would rather have them ban those. Um, yeah. SP Little Knight. I personally find probably the most fun extra deck monster at the moment. Um, Spiral King. Yeah, that's not a bad take. Um, it's not a bad take. I think, I think SP Little Knight is a phenomenal Yu-Gi-Oh card. I'm a big fan of it. I'm a big fan of it. 
Um, I'm not super happy with how this looks. I, I, I'll be honest with you. I'll, I, I, see, I see some criticism in chat and I do agree. I, I, I'm not super happy with how this looks. Because on the one hand, I think the Appaloza ban is not super likely right now because you pointed it out. You guys pointed out like it's going to be reprinted in Rarity Collection soon. You know, it, it, like they, they, they wouldn't want to ban it right now. And I agree. I don't think it's very likely. I don't think that's going to happen. Um, even though I do think it would be... I personally think it would be huge for the game if they banned Apple and Baron. I, th I think that'd be great. Um, but I don't think that'll happen. Which leaves me with... Some snake eye hits that I, I'm, I'm really not happy with one Ash, one Wanted, one Flamberge. I really am not. But I do think this is a situation right now. This situation that we're in, it just doesn't have a great solution. I think, th and, and this is a situation that they have maneuvered themselves into. This is completely their fault for, for getting into the situation. Because no matter what they do, people are not going to be happy with it. People are not going to be happy with no matter what they do because of two things. The first thing is if they hit Snake Eye too hard, people that have invested into Snake Eye are going to be really pissed, which is understandable because the deck was unholy expensive. Um, if they don't hit Snake Eye hard enough, then uh, people are going to be pissed as well because it's going to dominate. And uh, so they kind of have to find that sweet spot. And hitting that sweet spot is really, really hard, I think. I, I don't even know uh, what the sweet spot is, honestly. Like, um, I don't know. I don't know what the sweet spot, is, sweet spot is. So, like, if you're watching this on YouTube, let me know what you would do to Snake Eyes. Uh, and, like, I, I, do, I do understand that a lot of you guys are just like, yeah, fuck the people that invested into Snake Eyes. Uh, they should just hit it as hard as possible because it's so powerful. And I do understand where you're coming from. At the same time, I don't think that's a very smart idea. And I also think that's not a good business model for Konami. I don't think they, I don't think they can afford to just print cards in this rarity and have them be this expensive and then just on the next ban list, just slaughter them completely. I think that's going to ruin people's uh, trust into like card value in general um yeah i don't know and i also think snake eye is fun in its principles it's just like a, it's, it's way too powerful um konami made its money well on the snake eye cards yes but the problem is if they if if this kind of behavior becomes like the norm for konami people just won't be buying the cards anymore because why if if they if they constantly keep releasing cards and banning them 2 months later people won't buy cards in the future like that is not something that they would want to do i think like that that is just not uh, that is just not smart behavior i don't think um so this whole snake eye ban list discussion honestly is kind of frustrating to me because i i personally don't feel like there is a good solution um maybe instead of banning jet synchron you could hit the original sinful spoils how about that what happens if we ban original sinful spoils pure snake eye hmm So we can't make Synchros anymore. We can't get Ponyx anymore. We lose follow-up. We might not even need to hit Wanted if we do this, because, I mean, Wanted is, uh, is worse if you can't shuffle back original. The Wanted engine is dead. I mean, to that... To that, I say, there is a lot of other Diabell Star cards, and the Diabell Star lore also has just started. So, like, they could make other Sinful Spoils. Um, I think from a game design perspective, I actually don't hate this. Do they need to limit Ash? I don't know if I, how I feel about this limit Ash. This, this is just mostly a consistency hit, I feel like. I feel like limiting Ash, if, if we ban original, 
I feel like if we ban original, um, limiting Ash might be overkill because now Diabellstar also can't find Ash anymore. Like, if, if original is banned, think about it. If original is banned, Poplar isn't a starter anymore. Diabellstar isn't a starter anymore. Wanted isn't a starter anymore. It's legitimately, you need Bonfire or Snake Eye Ash. Like, I, I think if we ban original, we, ha we have to not touch this card. Is the deck dead if they ban original? It's co is it completely dead? I feel like it can't be dead. It can't be completely dead. Come on, dude. One Snake Eye Ash still does the entire thing. You don't need the uh, original for the Snake Eye Ash combo. It is a massive hit, though. Maybe that's interesting, though. Maybe that's interesting, though. Like, uh, th like the thing is, it's a it's a very small hit in the sense of like you're hit you're only hitting one card. You're only hitting one card, but you're changing how the deck plays fundamentally, which is kind of what we wanted. It's kind of what we wanted from the get go. We didn't want. It. I don't think this kills the deck completely, because you. I'm I'm sure you can still find ways to play the deck. Diabellstar will be useless then? What is the point of playing her? Uh, y well, yeah, kind of. It's, it's kind of weird because it disconnects the two engines, right? It disconnects the Snake Eye engine from the Diabellstar engine. Uh, like, Diabellstar in, its in itself could still be a fine card, but it wouldn't really make sense to play it in Snake Eyes anymore. I don't know if that's... I don't know if that... I mean... From the game, from the, okay, game design wise, I hate this, uh, I, I like this change. Game design wise, I think this would be a, a, a good change, um, but I don't think they will do it yet. I don't think, it, it doesn't seem, it doesn't seem right at the moment. I just want to point it out that that was worth considering. So what do we do then? Wanted to one, Flamberge to one. What do we do, man? It's tough. How do you hit this deck? It's so awkward, man. One card combo decks are so weird for this game, man. What do you hit? Ban Oak? I don't know. Ban Oak seems so weak. Like, banning Oak is such a weird hit because Oak is not the problem card. I don't know, man. I guess we'll have to leave it at this for now. <sighs> I don't know. It's very awkward. It's very awkward. Banning the field spell? Banning the field spell. Banning the field spell is interesting. I didn't even include the field spell in here. Does almost nothing. That is that is such an L take. The field spell, like uh, uh, every single one of my opponents last regional went for the field spell line turn one so if they were to hit the field spell if they were to hit the field spell you could some of the lines through Nibiru would be much worse maybe that's a good idea then we just play fire king yeah but the fire king deck honestly first of all fire king version is worse and fire king version also is 
more interactive because it has less omni negates and less rooms for hand less room for hand traps. With Flamberge at one, banning the field spell doesn't even do much anymore. Uh, there's lines with, yeah, I guess Flamberge to one is kind of similar to hitting the field spell. Yeah. I don't know. We're talking about this for too long. I, I, I think the, the problem in this situation, unironically, and I think the discussion shows that, is that it's really, really hard. They've made a deck. They, they, they have maneuvered themselves into a situation. They've made this deck. One card combo deck, 15 one card starters, very hard to effectively hit without killing it because every card does the same thing almost, right? So like hitting one of these cards is, is like really awkward. Uh, on the, on the, and then uh, as well, the deck is a thousand bucks. So if they hit it too hard, it's going to be really frustrating. If they don't hit it hard enough, it's going to be really frustrating. It, it's, it's, such a, it's such a weird spot, man. So you know what? I'm going to leave it at that. You guys let me know in the YouTube comments with you, what you think of the, of the Snake Eye hits, what, what they should do. And then I'm just going to leave the work to Konami, dude. Because they've, they've maneuvered themselves into this situation. You guys go solve it. You guys go solve the Snake Eye situation because it's very awkward. Um, moving on. Let's talk about other things that are way easier to solve. Um, I thought about... I thought about hitting other decks in the format and then i thought to myself you know what why why would we hit voiceless voice at the moment why would we hit labyrinth why would we hit whatever deck there is when at the moment everything just pales in comparison to snake eyes and I, I find it, I, I would find it very weird to talk about, like, how do we hit Manadium right now? Whatever, you know, like, of course, there are decks that if they hit Snake Eyes, they're going to come back into the meta. But I think that's fine. Legitimately, the only thing I want is to remove some problematic individual cards from the format that we're going to talk about right now. Um, and I felt like Branded was the only meta deck that was worth talking about for that. Um, honestly, I got no beef with Branded at the moment. I think they can have, they can keep their three Branded fusions. The only thing I want, uh, I want to tackle or I want them to tackle on a ban list is the gimmick puppet problem. That's it. Like you can keep your Branded fusion. I got no issue with Branded. I actually find, I find Branded quite fun to play against a lot of the times because it's like a very interactive deck. Doesn't come with any real Omni negates. Um, I only find it very toxic when they do gimmick puppet. And, um, so I thought about just banning gimmick puppet. But then I also realized, you know, there's, the Gimmick Puppet is a toxic card and probably should be banned. But then I realized you can still do a lot of other stuff with Sanctifier. Like you can do, um, you can do Edo, the Supreme Magical Force or whatever it's called. You know, there's other stuff. And um, so I, they, they did the same thing previously with Branded Expulsion. You know, they banned Expulsion instead of Gimmick Puppet. And I think... I would be happy with banning a Sanctifier. I'd be happy with banning Sanctifier. Honestly, Branded is still a really good deck with this. A lot of the things that it does are still really, really powerful. Just hit the Sanctifier and call it a day. Just hit the Sanctifier and call it a day. I think that'd be the perfect change. And I think even Branded players can't be unhappy with that. That's like, you, you have to admit that's a reasonable change. That has to be reasonable. Like, it just has to be. Um. And literally, every other deck in the game, they don't need to do shit about it. They do not need to do shit about it. Like, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's completely unreasonable at the moment to hit the other decks, because, like, no one is really complaining about anything else in the game, I think. I, I think if they solve Sanctifier and they solve Snake Eye somehow, it'd be, we're, we're in a good place. And so now we're going to talk about uh, individual cards that I think are... I mean, we, we keep talking about these, but I just want to, like, uh, the, the relevant ones at the moment, right? Joel and Lockbird, uh, I've, kind of, uh, I've kind of come to terms with Joel and Lockbird being in the format and sometimes being a necessary evil. Joel and Lockbird, I can accept. If they, if they don't want to, they don't have to touch Joel and Lockbird, in my opinion. Shifter is another story. I think Shifter is 
way too oppressive. And Shifter is single-handedly carrying Dex at the moment to uh, meta viability. Shifter is just toxic as hell, right? Um, the way I see it, Roland Lockbird is only good if the deck is problematic itself. Like, the deck that gets owned by, sh by, by Droll and Lockbird is probably the problem. Uh, the deck that gets owned by Shifter is just every Yu-Gi-Oh deck. Which is not great. Now, I don't... If, if I was in charge here, Shifter would be here. I, I'm gonna I'm keep it 100 with you guys. If, if I was in charge, Shifter would be here since probably two years. Um... But I, uh, apparently they don't want to do that. Apparently they don't want to do that. I'll take anywhere. Honestly, it doesn't matter. Put it to one, put it to two. I don't care. Just do something with it. Do something with it. I don't care. I don't care where you put it. Just don't leave it at three. Like, I'll, for some reason, I, I've always been, I've always said, like, ban the floodgates, right? I've always said that. And, and, they, and they didn't do it. And then last ban list, they limited uh, Gozen, Rivalry, and Tikibu. And even though, in theory, I don't agree that those cards should be at 1, because I think those kind of cards should just not exist. But then, in reality, they put them to 1, and I saw them, obviously, way less, you know? And that felt good. It felt good. I can live in a world with 1 Rivalry, 1 Gozen, 1 Tikibu, because that's still way better in my book than having all of them at three. And the same is true for Shifter. The, the same is true for Shifter. Shifter, whatever, put it to two, put it to one, just make it less likely for them to have it. Please. Please. I don't care. I don't care where you put it. Just put it somewhere. Just put it somewhere. If you're based, put it to zero, but, but do, do something with it. Do something with this thing. The same is true for these guys. I honestly don't see if they if they thought rivalry goes in and um, there can be only one should be at one. The same logic applies to these three cards. They have especially summon limit and anti spell have always been bannable. They've never been as bannable as now. Like right now, we saw this exact thing happening. Goes in rivalry Tigaboo went to one. And people are going to the next best floodgates, which are skill drain, anti spell, and summon limit. And in theory, in theory, there's more floodgates. But I think if we limit skill drain, anti spell, and summon limit, I think the worst of the worst are done. I think if they do this one more thing, we finally might have a, a, an acceptable situation with floodgates in the game. They're not completely gone. You can still play one of each. And if you play a bunch of them, you still have a decent amount. You just can't play like three of each of the best ones. Um, and I think if they did it to Gozen, Rivalry, and Tikibu, there's no reason why they shouldn't be doing it to specifically Skill Drain, Anti-Spell, and some of them. Um, so that's absolutely what they should do. They should absolutely do these, these things. They should tackle those cards, right? And unironically, this is all I want. This is all I want. I want Snake Eye hits. I want the gimmick pu puppet problem solved. And I want Floodgate hits. That's what I want. Why not ban them? I would, if I was in charge, I would ban them. I'm just, I'm, I'm trying to find the middle ground because apparently Konami doesn't want to ban these cards, which is something that I can live with. Um, I, I just don't want them to be at three. Um... I think if these, these three things happen, you know, do something to Snake Eye, do something to Sanctifier, hit the floodgates, including Shifter. Perfect. Perfect. I don't need any more. I don't need any more off of this ban list. If, if other decks come back into the format and are problematic, we can deal with them later. We can deal with them later. Um, but right now... All of these changes, I think, are meta-relevant at the moment. Snake Eyes, obviously, super dominant. These floodgates are seeing a lot of play. Shifter is seeing a lot of play. Branded with Gimmick Puppet is seeing a lot of play. So all of these things, I think, at the moment, are realistic and are called for. These things should happen. Um, everything else can stay the way it is. 
And all that's left is talk about some things that they should bring back. And the most important thing to me personally that they should bring back is Sharvara. I think the fact that they limited Sharvara in hindsight is criminal. Like, at the time when they limited Sharvara, to me it felt reasonable. Because it was before Fire Format, Unchained was arguably the best and most successful deck in the format. So when they did it, I was like, yeah, that makes sense. Now looking back at it, it's it was so harsh, man. It was so harsh. Like Unchained right now with three Sharvara wouldn't even be that good. Uh, and I I hope they realized that this was too much and they they reverse it as soon as possible. Like that that shouldn't have happened. That should not have happened. Like it 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 seemed reasonable at the time. Undo it. Undo it. Maybe even some of the other things that they did on that ban list. Maybe even like what was it Airlifter maybe whatever like uh, just just realize that you know that that stuff would not be a problem right now so yeah uh engage is something that i would like to see go back to three i had a lot of fun with sky striker engine at the last regional i don't think pure sky striker would be a problem i think uh i think engage could go back to three spam your copy pastas now have them ready uh i i, I do think engage is is fine at three in 2024 i would um I would like to have a third engage back. Uh, I, I am on the... Yeah, I like it. Uh, and then this other stuff is just... Honestly, this is kind of like a placeholder because I, I noticed that we keep repeating these things every single time a ban list is near. Um, there's a lot of stuff on the ban list that can just come off. Uh, most notably, there's a few cards here that have... Uh, well, Dryden't obviously can come back. It's in Macedon and doesn't do much. Uh, it's, it's, it'd be fine. These three here are all cards that have come off of the ban list in some capacity previously. You know, Harp went to one, Pancrotops went to two, Redox came back from banned to one. None of these cards did anything. If anything, some people cited Pancrotops, but it was completely fine. All of these guys can come back to three. Uh, and Redox is also a placeholder for all the Dragon Rulers. Um, and if you still think to this day, that Dragon Rulers cannot come back to 3 after all of them are at 3 in Master Duel now uh, and haven't done anything. Like, it's legitimately unplayable. Like, it's not even, like, rogue. It's, like, unplayable shit. Like, just declutter this ban list a little bit. For the love of God. These don't... You don't have to be afraid of, uh, of, of Dragon Rulers. Um, so, yeah. Why is Talents not on this list? Because we have had a talk about Talents in, in previous ban list discussions, and I think right now, uh, I think Talents is not as bannable as it was in the past. There's been times where Talents was much better than right now, but I, I do agree with you. I just don't want to have the same talk over and over and over and over and over again. So I'm, I'm trying to stick to the stuff that is currently relevant or more relevant than, than other stuff. Um, yeah. So, I personally think I would be pretty happy with a list like this. You know, like I said, tackle Snake Eye, tackle Floodgates, tackle uh, Sanctifier. Bring back some unnecessary stuff on the ban list, and I think we're good. I think, I think we're good. Um, honestly, I'm pretty happy with this list. The one thing that I'm not happy with, and I want to emphasize that again, I don't know exactly how I would hit the fire deck. I'm going to be honest with you. I don't know what the perfect way to hit the fire deck is. I think the situation is very hard to, to solve for them. And um, yeah, but let me know what you think in the comments down below. If you're watching this on YouTube, I hope you found it interesting. Let me know what you thought. Uh, thank you for watching. Make sure to, to like and subscribe and all the good stuff. Appreciate you for, for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye bye, YouTube. Or hello, YouTube. <laughs> if you haven't said that yet all right now yeah. i don't know man i'm i'm not i'm not happy with these snake eye hits either i'm not happy with them uh but it's it's tough it it, it really is tough i think to to do this right now like uh snake eye is a deck that's very hard to weaken What about Calamity? Uh, I think Calamity was bannable and is still bannable 100%. I just think that 
with these kind of cards, you kind of have to hit the timing with uh like for konami like there was like last format before fire format calamity was relevant because centurion came out and centurion saw play right so at that time i felt like it was a very good idea to hit calamity right and uh and i would have done it and i included it in past banlist discussions right now no one is playing it or like not many so I don't know if it makes sense to do it right now. Like, yeah, the card should be banned, but it was it would have made way more sense uh, last format. Oh yeah. What about masterpiece? Masterpiece could come back. I hate to say it, but masterpiece could come back. But I didn't want to include every single one of these uh, of these banned cards. I mean, what we can do right now is you guys can. Uh, can mess can can send a message with which card you should you think should come back, and I can tell you whether I think it could come back. Kid Kalos, I don't want Kid Kalos. No. Card of demise. Uh, card of demise. I would be okay with only if they ban all the floodgates. Kirin? Kirin could come back. Yeah, Kirin would be good. Electromite, I don't want. I don't want Electromite. Zodiac Barrage could come back. Colossus? Colossus, from a power level standpoint, it could come back. But I don't want it to come back because it's a floodgate. Simple as that. Circular? Uh, I don't think circular to one would matter. I'll give you that. However, I, I it'd be more funny if they left it banned. And card design wise, I mean, it's still one of the worst designed cards of all time, so it probably should stay. Naturia Sacred Tree absolutely could go back to three. Grass. I mean, I would like grass. I'm a fan of grass. But I think the uh, the problem with grass is that when I when I think of that grass looks greener, right? I think of my sixty card paleo deck, right? And I'm like, oh, that's based, right? The reality of things is that in modern Yu-Gi-Oh, people wouldn't really play anything based like that anymore. People would just go and do some crazy combo stuff with grass. So probably not, probably not grass. Uh, Sai mentioned, thank you for the five months. Appreciate that. Also, Kwaku Tsang, thank you for the gift subs earlier. Appreciate you. Thank you so much. What about really gimmicky cards like Fiber Jar? Uh, could probably come back. I don't know. Fiber Jar is such a messed up card, though. Fairy Tail Snow should not should never come back. Protoss should never come back. Picking Game could come back. Pearly Unhits? Uh, Pearly Unhits would be okay. Um, but I don't really... I don't have an issue with the state that Pearly is in. I think Pearly is fine the way it is. Sprite Elf? Sprite Elf, Sprite Elf should not come back. No. Verte? Verte? Um... Uh, Verte... You know what my issue is with Verte? I actually don't think it would be too strong. But I hate the kind of decks that you build when Verte is legal. If that makes sense. Like, I hated... I, in general, I hate engines that require you to play so many bricks in your deck. Right? And like, if people... I, it's just, I don't want that. I don't want to, even if it is good, I don't want it to be good. Like, even if it's not too broken, I, I just don't want it to be viable. I don't want to be forced to play Fusion Destiny, uh, Dasher, uh, Celestial in my deck or something like that. I just don't want that, dude. I just don't want that kind of deck building to happen. Uh, Nielsbro, thank you for the full year. Appreciate you. And uh, Blue, thank you for the nine months. Bring back the Nightmare and Guard Dragon links. Are you referring to Nightmare Mermaid? I don't want Nightmare Mermaid. 
Uh, Guard Dragon, I think, are also not a good idea. <laughs> Ronin Toten? Oh, yeah. Ronin Toten should come back. Absolutely. Yeah. Nightmare Goblin is so ass, dude. <laughs> that's 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 such an L take. Nightmare Goblin is such an insane card, man. I don't want Nightmare Goblin one bit. No. There are cards. There are cards that simply There are Yu-Gi-Oh cards where if you bring them off of the ban list, there is two potential outcomes. And it is hard to predict what, ha what of the two. Either they are not quite strong enough so they don't see play, or they are incredibly problematic. And Nightmare Goblin is one of those cards. Uh, and some other cards that you guys are mentioning are the same. And I think in a lot of those instances, I personally prefer if they just stay banned. Those kind of cards. I, I just prefer that we don't take that risk. There's a few cards that have a very hard time being balanced, is what I'm trying to say. They are either unplayable or super broken. Can Curious come back? Yeah, absolutely not. Uh, the Bat Horse, thank you for the Prime. Appreciate that. Thank you. All right. All right. Master plan to one? Nope. Absolutely not. <laughs> okay. Chat, we have about one and a half hours until we do the podcast with Ryan Yu. Uh, we are, we have about one and a half hours until we do the podcast with Ryan Yu. So let us hop into some gameplay. You can got, you can keep asking questions while we play. That's fine. Uh, Just Pope, thank you for the tier one sub. Appreciate the first time subs, everybody. Thank you so much. Welcome, welcome. Uh, Moisey Flu, thank you for the 16. Appreciate you. Welcome back. Snatch Steel the two. Uh, I, ha I don't have an issue with Snatch Steel. Yeah, it's one of those cards that I think is... Snatch Steel is one of those cards that it hasn't been played enough, so they could... Bring it back to two or three, but it is realistic that you would see that it would see play at some point. But I think that's okay. I think that's okay. Since when? Is, since when is turbulence the starting screen? By the way, do you think Beatrice should be banned? I think both Beatrice and Wave King Caesar uh, are something to consider. Yes. Um. Ba -ba -ba. How far are we from Master One? I think we're Master Five. Yeah, we're Master Five. I wanted to take a look at um I wanted to take a look at furniture labyrinth with uh where's my labyrinth? I don't have a labyrinth deck. I guess I don't. Konami should unban kit and elf to give fire decks competition. It's easier than hitting the fire deck. Uh, I don't think that's the right approach. No, I think the I think the fire deck is is operating at a power level that is too high at the moment, and that needs to be brought down. Uh, let's do, let's try to do rollback labyrinth. The only thing that's weird about labyrinth with rollback is that you only have four furniture pieces so you don't have easy ways to discard rollback as often i think that's why i want to be playing ariane in some capacity maybe two i don't think three is called for but we can try two copies um 
you're going to play three, two, one, probably. And one Ku Clock. Maybe two of this, potentially. Uh, we're going to be playing Max C. We're going to be playing Ash Blossom. Uh, can you try some Vanquish Soul with a small cash engine? Uh, maybe. We'll see how much time we have. Imperm. Why do you have four Ash Blossoms? I kind of... I don't like... I don't like this artwork for Ash Blossom more than the original one. But I do kind of think that the, 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 uh, the effect that it gives you is very funny. The fact that it just like dances around your opponent's card when you negate it is very funny to me. So I, I'm, I've been trying to pull three, uh, three of these because it's, it's so funny. Um, but then I still wanted to keep the old ones. And I only have pulled one so far, so. Um, okay, so this is kind of what you have to play. You can play Extravagance. Do we play... Nadir Servant. Maybe not. I feel like we have too many normal summons if we did. We can play Prosp. We can play Valor. Um, the Ruma, maybe. Hmm. Check DMs for real lab go. Nah, I don't want to play the resonators right now. I don't, I want to try like a more like normal version. We we're very low on trap cards. Maybe we play maybe we play a third welcome labyrinth because it's a good scent for Ariana as well. Mm. Ice dragon. Oh, ice dragon is pretty good. Yeah. Ice dragon's prison is pretty strong. Maybe this is fine. Maybe this is fine. I don't know if two Ariane is too many. Uh, but I want to try it, so I'm going to play two. Uh, we need Chaos Angel. Uh, we need Muckraker. We need... Um, I guess Baguska, maybe. We need... Uh, Anima is okay. Goddess is okay. Zeus? Maybe. Ariane enables Dweller into Zeus. That's true. We can do some rank 4s with Ariane, yeah. Because it doesn't lock you into Fiend. Typhon isn't out in Master Duel yet. Exiton? I don't know if we need three Baguskas. Two is fine, probably. Um, the DDD prop package? Machinex? I don't have Machinex. I don't want to craft Machinex right now. I don't think it's that important. Um, Dark? Azalea? Donner? Hmm... Nightmares. Dark seems okay. Nightmares. Uh, these are kind of the cards I want to be playing. This, this. Is Ash your only tuner for Angel? 
I refuse to answer that question. That has to be made. Uh, oh, I did not see Valor. You know, that was not the reason why I didn't want to answer the question. But okay, sure. Uh, I've got the link but whatever. Is tomorrow Duelist Cup? Yeah, right? Okay, nice. One of extravagance, no problem. Easy. Ooh. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, it's a little annoying. Because I would want to summon Ariane. Sure. Uh, we discard this first. So we can dodge Valor. And then we summon Toby. Yeah, we summon Stoby Torby. Which can then discard the rollback. Um, or. Field spell or welcome lab? Why not Ariana? Because we're under droll. That's that this hand this was this was yeah, okay. Easy. Dude, the Ariana was pretty nice there. Three Ariane might be overkill. Okay. I'm gonna start with Pros. Uh I'll banish some two offs. Exit on Cerberus and Unicorn. I'm trying to find a furniture. I did not. Okay. I wanted to get a furniture because then I could have dodged Imperm or Valor on the Ariana with Chain Discard Big Welcome Bounce, but okay. Um... I guess we'll grab Welcome Labyrinth. That's fine. And we just try to resolve this. If it doesn't work out, we still have a solid hand. Okay, it does resolve. Cool. Do I go Ku Clock? Probably. Probably a good idea to go Ku Clock here. <sighs> Do I activate Welcome or Big Welcome?
If I go big welcome, I have to summon Lovely from hand. Do I have any cool Ariana lines? If I welcome into Ariane, send my big welcome. But what do I summon? Probably not. Okay. Ooh, called by the grave. That's a good discard. Still not the greatest opener, honestly. It wasn't that insane. Because this was in hand. Would have been much nicer if it wasn't. Sick. Um... Okay, I go welcome. I mean, I can I can get Ice Dragon's prison right now. That's probably a good idea. Welcome lab, summon lovely. Big welcome. Chain the set. Yeah. Here. Here. Chain. Ice Dragon's Prison. Summon. Balance. Uh, add, destroy one in hand, destroy the fencer, um, Didn't you use clock last turn? Yeah, I'm going to get it back when I use a furniture here. Uh, Stovey Torby? Or Chandelier? Get Stovey Torby. Stovey Torby. Pitch this. Yeah, big welcome. This feels like my turn. The question is, do I immediately use Ice Dragon's Prison before they attempt to use Sigma? Or do I... Wait, if I wait, if they normal summon a math mech, they can trigger circular's effect. I think I'll use it. Oh yeah, Lingaribo is another reason. Actually, no, Lingaribo doesn't matter because they can't chain to my lovely, because of lovely. Yeah.
I don't know, maybe I was supposed to wait. Let's hope the Veiler can save us, but I don't know if it can. I love how I, I jokingly said them putting this to two doesn't matter because all of my opponents always have it anyways. And since the ban list, every single one of my Cybers opponents still had the card anyways. Like, it's, it's legit irrelevant. Does terahertz point upwards? So they can make an untargetable terahertz now? Oh, they didn't do that. Okay. <laughs> Dude. The problem is I can't Veiler the... I can't Veiler this guy, right? Because if I do, they just chain it. And if, if they attempt battle phase, they can do it in the battle phase. But I can't Veiler in the battle phase. So I just Veiler the Axis code. And hope that this doesn't... Does this kill me? Maybe it does. Maybe it doesn't. I don't know. They can only attack with one monster, but usually they play multiplication. If they play multiplication, it's game, right? No. Yeah. Maybe I should have waited with my stuff. I thought I was going to be fine. But I didn't expect him to have Defensor and Exceed. Hmm. This hand is a little bit awkward. Maybe it's Chandrolier, discard Ariane, a set big welcome, and then use, uh, Ar no, Ar discard Ariana, and then use Ariane sending the big welcome. I think that's what I'm going to do. Send the big welcome special Ariana, but what's the point of doing that? If 
If I go Chandrelier, set big welcome, then summon Ariana, use our Ar Ar Ariane, send big welcome, special another Ariana, search what? I think I just want to get both traps here. I don't want to go for a Ku Clock and lose to Ash Blossom instantly. I think because we have Nib and Ash Blossom, that's the fine play to do. They had a response window. It could have been uh, Maxi as well, I think, but we'll see. I could also, it's very likely they have Ash, yeah. The Viner of the Herald. Now, what, what is that? What deck is that? Mikanko? Yeah, I'll let him cook. Entis. Okay. So, if I chain Big Welcome here, and they have Ash, I actually have no interruption. What I could do is I could activate Welcome Lab, and if they don't Ash that, I can just let my Big Welcome die, and then I have the bounce from it. I like that. Just activate Welcome... If you ash this, I chain big welcome. If you don't ash this, I just let my big welcome die. And I summon lovely, I bounce later to get bounce and pop. And draw from Ariana too. Yeah, easy, okay. We don't have Nib now is the downside. What do you mean? I have Nib. Rep. Okay. It is Mikako. Okay. Sure. Sure. I'm pretty sure they have Ash. I'm pretty sure they have Ash. So Ash. Ohime. Water Arabesque. This Carnini. This makes it a little bit awkward if they target my lovely. Ah, uh, this is a little awkward. I think I'm gonna big welcome the Herald. Just ash it. Oh, yeah, I can also just ash it. Yeah, okay, I'll ash it. That's probably better.
So their hand, four cards, Ohime and Ash, two unknowns. Uh Hmm. Quick effect equip. I don't think I care if they take the one that steals. Like, if they send Rondo here and they activate Ohime, I just chain the bounce to Ohime. Yeah. Sure. This can be destroyed, right? There's literally 10 people in chat saying no right now as I as it's already destroyed on the screen. Mikanko makes Twitch chat go completely absurd. Like it's 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 ridiculous. Twitch chat with under Mikanko is like all the brain cells are gone instantly.
There's the ash. So it's just oh homie in the hand. Uh we go for damage first. I do want to link off this lovely because I don't want this Erebus to stay. So, wait, we can still reset. They add back Arabesque anyways. Oh, because this? Banish this card. Oh, yeah, they get it back. Uh... I guess I could just leave it then and get the field spell. That's fine. Yeah. I don't think it matters. So if they get they get the green one now, right? They get the green one, which is Untargetable, undestructible, but I can just prevent that with... Can't I just go Ice Dragon's Prison? You can just pop the equip. Oh, you can destroy the... You can destroy the equip? I thought it was protected. Is it just not targetable? Oh, okay. It's only targeting. Okay, 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 okay. Yeah, they get the green one. Discard the green one. So what I was thinking, which I'm pretty sure also works. So what I wanted to do was this. Chain. Like, it doesn't matter. This is also guaranteed. Like, you get Ice Dragon's Prison. Could also be Karma Cannon. It doesn't really matter. Uh, summon Ku Clock. Bounce Ku Clock. Uh, they can trigger the trap to add back the thing. You trigger... Do I trigger this yet? Well, I won't... I don't think I get to trigger it later. Mm. I definitely triggered this. IDP triggers it? Are not... No, right? Because I won't be able to... I, they don't have something on the field that I can banish. You might have trolled too much? Nah, right? So 
So they have now Arabesque. They, got, they can try the summon green, but I can stop that with IDP. And then they have just Arabesque. Which I don't think that's enough, is it? Like, they can Arabesque bounce one of my things to summon uh, the, the red one and search one, but I don't think that's enough. If I do lose this, it's 100% my fault. But I don't think I do lose, right? Because I'm pretty sure it's done here, right? Like, they can do 6,000 damage to me, but I don't think... What does the trap card do? Oh, they just end... Why do they not attack? Oh, none of my business. Low on time, maybe. Uh, your opponent cannot target me Kanko cards with card effects. Cannot be destroyed by battle. The equipment ones that can't be destroyed by card effects. Okay, so chain. Chain. Do not lose the timer, please. Yeah, 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 yeah.
All right. I hate Mikanko, dude. The games are always stressful. Even though it's supposed to be easy. We haven't done transaction rollback once. We had it one time, but they scooped. Did you play the deck I sent you? What, the tier? No, I didn't. Why would I? I don't even like tier in its current, like, iteration in Master Duel. I'm not a fan of tier anymore. Because it's just gambling. I don't like it. Rage. Nope. Yep, both of them. Cool. Both of them are dead. Sick. Love called by the grave. Very cool. Jesse was saying he thinks evenly is a bad card right now. Do you agree? Uh, I think evenly is not great. Yeah. Like the snake eye deck just has too many things going on. And like if they're playing the pure version, they might also end on Omni Gates. It's not terrible. But I think like the problem is that evenly doesn't really have a good home, right? Like you, you would have to focus your entire strategy around the grind game and most people are just not doing that right now you are the, the two approaches that people are doing at the moment is you either hand trap the deck or you otk the deck and evenly doesn't work in either of those approaches right Uh, thank you for the six months. Uh, MD is treating me okay so far. It's It's been going all right. Uh, you did miss the ban list discussion, though. Yeah, you did miss it. But it'll be up on YouTube soon. Don't worry about it. You'll, you'll get to see it. Okay, I didn't expect him to go for the line without Promethean Princess, but unfortunately I can't really punish it because my hand is complete and utter garbage. Into Called by the Grave on Maxi. Earthbound without Runic's win? Uh, never.
Can I see the deck to compare non-engine? You can check on Discord. Uh, exclamation mark Discord. Uh, there's a channel in my Discord server called Current Decklist where my mods always post the uh, the decks that I'm using. We have looked at new Drytrons, yes. Um, probably go for Welcome Labyrinth. Or like big welcome and then discard one ash for Stovi Torby to have both traps. Did we win the coin toss? I'm not sure. Maybe not. I felt like we lost it. Yeah. Is it me Kanko again? Was that Gamma? Maybe it's Maxi. Oh, it's Magnamoot. Okay, that's pretty good here. What kind of blind second deck plays Magnamoot? Uh, RC say, thank you for the prime. Appreciate you so much. Thank you. Oh, it's blind second branded. Okay, well. Ten pie smile. Blue belly on. All right, sure. I kind of feel like dealing with this Lubelion because Brandon lost. If I if I just have Ash and they have a way to stop it, that'd be really annoying. Uh, can I get Lovely? If I get Lady and then Lovely, no. I could set one, but I wouldn't be able to activate it. Oh. I could just imperm the this thing. Oh well, no. So this Uh, that response window could just be the Serenir, because that's a quick effect at the moment. that draw oh, that's good and special yes. mm. 
All right, well. I still don't really know what kind of deck, like what kind of brand the deck wants to blind second, but sure. Kind of confused by this entire thing. Albats. Pitch tragedy. If they send Branded Fusion for this, instead of Root Root, they could reset it now. They would have access to it, but okay. Apparently, they don't need it. I'll just grab a big welcome. Interesting. Mercurier. Does Mercurier search anything here that I care about? No way, right? I mean, I I'm, I never ash this. Kit. Well, yeah, I can Valor the kit though. I I'd, I'd rather Valor the kit than. Okay, that's weird because they have they have no normal summon. Okay. They have that, sure. Da, 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 da. Is it worth veiling this? Probably not. The cool thing here is that if they already have branded fusion, they can't have called by. Uh, the problem is if their hand is if they have called by, uh, and they just go like Grand Guignol here, chain link one Serenir, chain link two Grand Guignol, and then send branded fusion, add it back with retribution, and then called by my Ash Blossom. That's the worst case scenario. Albion. Not that Alveolar. Don't you know their whole hand? I only know Quem. See, and now if we had the other Ash, it would have walked all over their Branded Fusion. It's insane. I think I need a playset of that for that reason. It's actually crazy. It's necessary, I think. You need that.
I think you need it. For the best. Crouching Albion was 100% the play there, yeah. Um, when a spell trap is activated, return to the extra deck. One face-up fusion you control or two in the grave that mention Albaz. So if I just attack the Albion... They can't use Retribution. Right? Uh, I could also bounce the Albion with Big Welcome in the Graveyard, which is uh, probably nice. That seems nice, too. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I don't know why they went second. They probably just misclicked. But we had Ash, so it didn't really matter. Furniture rollback is nice. The problem is... I'm not entirely sure what the best choke point is to Ash Resonators. The level 6 Synchro? The level 6 Synchro is like... Uh, summon 2 from the deck, right? I could also ash this to stop the send and to stop the level modulation so they can't even make the level 6 synchro. Maybe that'd be okay. I'm not familiar. The synchro can't be ashed. Well, what are you guys saying then? Oh, there's a resonator though that you use with that, right? Why don't I just ash this now? I'll ash this. This seems okay. This is where we get called by the none of it matters anyways. No, okay. Hmm. That's slightly scary because they the ability they look at my hand because they can keep playing probably.
Oh, or not. Okay. Normal summon. Attack. Big welcome. Lovely. Bounce this guy. Right? I think they got Maxi. That's fine. My question is, do I pop the Crimson guy or do I pop a random card in hand? I think I want to pop the card in hand. <laughs> okay, thank God I did that. Holy! Okay. The hell, man. Oh my God. Red Reboot. In this economy? Why? Ah, oh. this hand is disgusting. Ah, oh. nice rank up game. I'm pretty sure the only way you lose this matchup is by bricking. I don't think you can lose it otherwise with Labyrinth. No. Okay. They did not take any bait. Epic.
time to wake up, dude. It's time to wake up out of this fever dream. What the hell? So they're literally they had one chance, and that was for me to completely brick with that pile of cards. Not well done. Uh-oh. Okay, Shuffler and Destrudo, but no tier name. Am I weird? Because I just want to play my Paleo deck? That was fun yesterday. What are they cooking? Did I miss the podcast? You did not miss the podcast, but... Alright, easy clap. Good matchup. Very nice. Beat themselves. Sick. Love that for us. Played for the Duelist Cup? Maybe. Maybe, yeah. Uh, it's not... We If we start a game with the Paleo deck right now, we won't be able to finish it because the podcast is set to happen in 10 minutes, so... That's not enough for the Paleo deck. <laughs> This hand is solid. This is one way to describe it. It's a solid hand of Yu-Gi-Oh cards. Uh, Kowloon, I... I kind of don't want to deal with Chuche. I kind of want to Ash this. I know Ash is usually very good on Lulu. But I kind of want to ash this. I have more hand traps. I'm going to ash it. Why do you keep going second? I don't know. Ask the game, dude. I can't win coin flips today. Yesterday as well. Like, it was crazy. I'm being nerfed. GG. It's not just the fact that I lose the coin flip. It's not just the fact that they open Lulu, Kowloon, Normal Summon. But also the fact that they open Ash on my Maxi as well. It's just like, how does this happen? This deck is like tier 10. Loser Q, we just won! You mean loser's Q? Oh my god! Oh my god, dude!
Do we imprint Beatrice? I, I, I'm hoping, what I'm hoping at the moment is that they are going for some Beatrice rollback into the Mayakashi one. Because we actually don't care about the Mayakashi one. Think donk. Yeah, I'll, I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm almost done. I'm almost done. Don't worry about it. Please go for rollback stuff. Yeah, okay, nice. What is this? Special summon monsters from hand, deck, or extra deck for the rest of this turn. Yeah, that doesn't matter. That's fine. That's why I'm not imperming the Beatrice. I don't care about it if they go for that. Shin Shin. Okay. I hope they shotgun it too. They can add Lulu back, yep. That's not very good. Do you think if I imperm this, they will Griffin? I'll try it. I want to bait the griffin for sure. Nice. Okay, good. Cool. That needed to be dealt with. They can grab it again next turn. We might have to prevent that somehow. We'll see. Oh no, don't roll back me, please. No, dude. Okay. Oh well. You have got to be kidding me, man. No, I just die, right? I literally just die. If they summon Griffin. If they're smart enough to summon the Griffin. I guess I summon Lady in attack? Oh, now they can target it because they hit the right one. Sick. Love that for me. But... What if I summon... Lovely. Can they out it at the moment? With the cards that I'm seeing? I don't think so. I don't know. Oh, it's banished because of Shenshin. That's very annoying. Oh, they drew Nyan Nyan. And now, okay, and now they're gonna Lulu. Okay, sick.
I might be a minute late. A minute. <laughs> For the cast. This is important though. I can already join the call though. Hold up. Wawa. Okay, look, I, I'm about to lose to uh to Wawa. virtual world. I can't let that happen. <laughs> what? Losing to virtual world without VFE. Uh, hold up, I can't hear you guys. Give me a second. Can you hear us, chat? Okay, what am I? What am I saying? Washawa, Washawa. Can you hear me, chat? Washed, washed. Okay, okay here I am. Here I am. Here I am. Oh, hey, sorry. We were just talking about how good the game was going for you. Are you watching? Yeah, yeah. It looks like you got this, bro. <laughs> you got this. Your opponent's like computer has to crash for you to win. No, we got this. What is this Washua emo? Is it you in a shower curtain? Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. We a don't shower, talk about a shower cap, brother? Yeah. Damn. Yeah. Looks good. <laughs> they, they just need to summon one more. Uh, Echo. Who's echoing? Is it me or them? Alright, I'll get a headset. Alright, shut up, chat. <sighs> Did you see your call out on Twitter, Josh? No. no. <laughs> Sorry, not Twitter, uh, Reddit. Not either. You uh, you said that Tenpai was not going to be a good deck, so uh, you got called out. Yeah. yeah. Well. <laughs> yep. I mean, now that people know about it in the OCG, it's already halved in representation since one week, because, like, it's actually not that hard to stop. Yeah, weird. Yeah. Uh, a contain stops it. Am I right, MBT? <laughs> All right, I'm ready. Uh, I've been humiliated, and I am now ready. Wait, you I'm can echoing. Keep unpending. <laughs> oh wow! So I'm wearing my headset for no reason. Who's echoing, chat? No one's I echoing. Was, okay, people are chatting. I thought it was Farfa because I could hear myself when I was. Yeah, it was we were just probably me. All right, so let me get the OBS Ninja ready. Did you want to be on camera, Ryan, or not? That, yeah, sure. Uh, bup, bup, bup. Can you guys uh, buy me an RGB, like, lighted uh, headset? That way I won't have any echo and I'll look like a real gamer. No. Okay. <laughs> Bro, I remember Ryan winning. The <laughs> nursery was. There's a link you guys need to join with your cameras. Yes, the, the link you're supposed to click, yes. How do I, like, right. this is the client? It is over, oh, I have to click start. Oh. oh, wait a second, there's like a setting that literally says 1080p. Have I just not been clicking this for like the last seven episodes? <laughs> Dude, you, you are unreal, actually. Dude, that's... Whoa, there's an option for this? That's crazy. <sighs> we are uh, professionals out here, ladies and gentlemen. Why don't you have me up yet? Are you serious? Yeah, yeah, Chad, I've turned off the fans. Don't worry. There won't be can, any echo. How can he still a cat? Yeah, why am I still a cat, Josh? Uh-huh. And you don't have me up for whatever reason. Oh, calm down. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, it's ready. Uh, it's still not. 
good quality for whatever reason. All right, oh, it is. What sounds it like is. a you issue. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe it's just being British. Like, I had to. I ended my stream early, uh, last night. Um, yesterday early, mm -hmm. because, just because just, just Britain is. Oh, was your internet doing weird stuff? Yeah, yeah. Well, anyway, uh, shall we begin? Yes. Okay. <clears throat> do, 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 do. YouTube, Spotify, and all other mediums of contact. Hello, Twitch. Say hi. Welcome, everyone. Uh, today's episode uh, is joined by a special guest. Uh, we're looking at the Duelist Cup, and we have the Duelist Cup extraordinaire, Ryan Yu. Hi. Hi, Ryan. How are you? 